Hello guys, I am back with another video and today, we will talk about Jackie Wilson. The man who inspired Michael Jackson and so many others. He was nicknamed Mr. Excitement due to his high energy performance on stage. The sad thing about his life is that he is overlooked in the music industry compared to James Brown, Elvis, and Ray Charles. Disclaimer. I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about a celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel, and it is just for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. Jack Leroy Wilson, Jr. was born on June 9, 1934, in Highland Park, Michigan, the only son of Jack Sr. and Eliza Mae Wilson. Wilson spent the majority of his young life further south in Mississippi. He will go to church with his grandparents and the church choir had a major influence on Wilson as a child. He was not religious at all and only went to church for the music. Wilson's father was often absent due to alcoholism and he was out of work. Jack Sr. was living on the street with other alcoholics. At age 9 or 10, Wilson's parents separated. Eliza married again to a man with a job and with this union they were able to produce a sibling for Jackie. Wilson got along with his stepfather, but he had a rapport with his father. In eighth grade, Wilson dropped out of school and started to indulge in alcohol. He became a juvenile delinquent who was incarcerated twice. The first time was chronic truancy, and the second time was other transgressions of the law. Growing up in the rough Detroit area of North End, Wilson didn't have a role model to look up to and so he joined a gang called the Shakers. His passion for singing started to develop at an early age. As a teenager, he started a vocal group called the Early Ready Gospel Singers. They would sing in churches and on street corners as well as participating in talent shows in Detroit. He also performed in bars, barely being legal. His mother did not approve of this, but Wilson didn't care. Wilson will use a fake identification to enter. Wilson sang with the Thrillers before they changed their name to the Royals, an R&B quartet. Before Wilson could become a full-fledged member of the group, they signed with King Records and left him behind. At age 16, Jackie married his childhood sweetheart, Frida Hood, who at the time was pregnant with Jackie's child. Jackie has known Frida since he was 10 years old, after she had become pregnant. It was the first of her 15 pregnancies. When they first did the deed, Frida said that Wilson knew a lot about sex. Wilson was living the life of an adult and he has not even reached puberty yet. When Frida's father found out about it, he was furious and demanded that there will be a marriage. During the marriage, Frida put up with a lot of Jackie's crap. Frida would allow him to cheat. Jackie would cheat right in front of Frida. Eventually Frida filed for uncontested divorce and that provided her with the house, cash settlement for herself and child support. At that time, they had four children, two daughters and two sons. She was an alcoholic herself and she was not able to take care of the children and they would often reside with Wilson's mother. Frida decided to divorce him due to his womanizing ways but later regretted that decision. He also took up boxing to support his family, but the thing was that he was never really good at boxing and would lose the majority of the matches he was in. One incident occurred when his mother called him by his nickname, Sonny to grab his attention. He looked at the crowds to find his mother. His opponent took advantage of it and started to beat on him. His mother saw the horror and just couldn't allow his son to box anymore. He did however benefit from boxing which was him being more self-confident and able to fight. Wilson gave up boxing because of his mother and decided to pursue his dream to sing. He recorded a couple of songs but never had any commercial success. In 1952, he joined a vocal group, Billy Ward and his Dominoes and toured with them. But Wilson was just an understudy to the lead vocalist. With the group, they recorded songs that were a success such as You Can't Keep a Good Man Down, became a near R&B hit and was soon followed by the R&B hit Rags to Riches. Wilson was lead singer on the Domino's first pop hit, Street Therese of the Roses, in 1956. When the group was performing at Las Vegas, Jackie was singing Elvis's songs and Elvis was very impressed by his rendition of his songs. Elvis started to study Jackie's mannerism and his dancing and started to corporate it in his own performance. 
After the tour was over, he went to New York and studied under Billy Ward, who trained him vocally for two years. In 1957 Wilson left the Dominoes for a solo career. Al Green, a music publisher and manager who already managed singers Johnny Ray, Della Reese and Laverne Baker, took over as Wilson's manager. Green went to New York, met Decca Records' Bob Thiel, and secured Wilson a contract with Decca's Brunswick label. The day before the deal was to be signed, Al Green died. Upon Green's death, Nat Tarnapal, Al Green's business associate, became Wilson's manager. Signing with Brunswick Records, Wilson soon had a minor hit with Reed Petit, co-written with Barry Gordy, Jr., and Rockwell Billy Davis. Gordy slash Davis also co-wrote Wilson's major pop and R&B smash hits To Be Loved, That's Why, and I'll Be Satisfied, and his top R&B and pop hit classic Lonely Teardrops. Wilson appeared in the film Go, Johnny, Go Singing You Better Know It. Barry and Davis left Brunswick Records because of inadequate payment. Tarnapal felt confident he could do without them, despite the remarkable success the team had, and refused to pay what they felt was owed them. Without knowing it, Tarnapal did Davis and Gordy a favor, as both went on to have successful careers. Barry Gordy used his royalties on the nine hits he'd co-written for Jackie to establish his Hitsville USA Studios, destined to become the enormous Motown recording label. Davis joined Chess Records in Chicago as A&R manager, songwriter and producer, achieving success for himself and other black acts. Jackie trusted Nat Tarnapal implicitly and foolishly signed over power of attorney to him. Deciding that Wilson should not limit himself to singing rock and roll, Tarnapal had veteran band leader and Decca arranger Dick Jacobs produce most of Jackie's recordings from 1957 through 1966. During the early 60s, he was making hits like he used to, especially when he was working with Davis and Gordy. The song's night, Please Tell Me Why, I'm Coming Back to You, Years From Now and The Greatest Hurt were a pop smash, but the rest didn't do so well on the pop and R&B charts. He partnered with Alonzo Tucker, and they came up with Baby Workout Shake a Hand and Shake. 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 So, let's get into Wilson's love life, Jackie was not a nice man, especially when it comes to women. Jackie was a superstar, and he was handsome, and he was rich at the time. So, he had groupies and women just wanting to sleep with him any chance they got. Some of these women were gold diggers, promiscuous, wild, crazy, naive and gullible, and some had attributes that Jackie possessed. Some of these women were in love with Jackie, but he never loved them back. So, these women put up with a lot of his crap. Jackie would often flirt with other girls in his significant other's presence. He would allow his woman to wait in the car while he finished the deed with his side chick. Patti LaBelle stated that he was almost sexually assaulted by Jackie Wilson. It was backstage at a theater, and she was alone. Jackie came behind her and started kissing on her neck. Patti could smell the liquor on his breath as she struggled to free herself. Jackie's goons came and dragged Patti to an empty room with Jackie. She started to scream loud, but no one could hear her. She screamed even more until they backed off and she ran away from the scene. Jackie also had an affair with Laverne Baker, Ruth Brown, and possibly Tammy Terrell. Lee Angel, a stripper and a groupie in the 60s stated that Jackie said to her that it is okay for him to have multiple girls, but his girls have to be faithful to him. Jackie Wilson had fathered so many children that are currently still living today. One of them is Alexis Tylers, she said that she is Jackie Wilson's daughter because her mother was raped by Jackie Wilson when she was just a teenager. There are stories out there about Jackie Wilson allegedly sleeping with underage girls. Jackie's second wife was Harleen Harris, who was a model that graced the cover of Jet and Ebony magazine. Some say she had quite the reputation and that she was a gold digger and a groupie who sought out successful men to take care of her. The men she dated were Clyde McFadder, Sam Cooke, and Jackie Wilson. She ended up with Jackie Wilson and they got married. At that time, Jackie was messing around with another woman, Juanita Jones. Juanita was filled with jealous rage that she planned to kill Jackie in his apartment. Jackie was shot twice by Jones who was waiting to ambush him with a revolver. Jackie was seriously wounded and was rushed to the hospital. Jackie's life was saved, however, he lost a kidney. Tarnapal encouraged Jackie to marry her because it would repair his image in the public eye. After a year, Jackie separated from Harleen because he found out that Tarnapal and her were having an affair. They only have one son together. 
Now, some say that Harleen cheated on Jackie to get back at him. Harris used the terms of the legal separation to have Wilson arrested for non-payment of support each time he returned to New York from touring, so Wilson was eventually forced to record in Chicago. These conditions also meant that he could no longer see their son. During that time, Tarnapal started to screw him over. He was incredibly naive and easily trusting, something that Tarnapal took advantage of. Wilson had signed overpower of attorney to him despite strong rumors of Tarnapal's mob connections and his reputation as a shady businessman. In 1962 the IRS seized Wilson's family home due to his failure to pay back taxes, due mainly to the fact that Tarnapal had been pocketing all of Wilson's earnings. Wilson realized that, despite the success of his career, he was broke and homeless. Eventually, he made arrangements with the IRS to make restitution on the unpaid taxes and was able to repurchase his own house at an auction. He married again to a third wife, Lynn Crochet with whom he lived in the 1970s until he became incapacitated. With Crochet's help, Wilson at last freed himself of drugs and alcohol. Jackie and Lynn had a son, for Lathan Kenneth, born in 1972, and a daughter, Lenya Sean, who was born in 1975, less than two months before Wilson's collapse. Jackie, Lynn, and the children officially resided in Georgia at that point, although Lynn usually traveled with Wilson until Lenya's birth, and Sunthor was part of the singer's touring party as early as two weeks of age. Wilson also had three daughters, Brenda, Sabrina, and Gina, born of unions with three other women he did not wed. Jackie Wilson started to feel sad about the record company and management. He started to drink and use drugs more. After the death of his 16-year-old son, Wilson enrolled himself into a drug rehab center. Following his son's death, his daughter also died by gunshot over a drug-related incident. Jackie started to tour again while Jackie Wilson was performing on stage, with the Dick Clark Review in New Jersey, Jackie suffered a massive heart attack. Wilson was in a coma in the hospital for three months. Jackie had also suffered severe brain damage as a result of his head hitting the stage when he collapsed. Although he partially recovered, his great career was over. Jackie could not speak, and his communication for the next eight years, until his death at age 49, was limited to the blinking of his eyes. After years of litigation that had tied up his assets and negatively affected the care he was given, Jackie Wilson died in one of the nursing homes where he had lived since the heart attack and head injury. Jackie died of pneumonia at age 49. Jackie suffered one more indignity as a result of the battle over his estate when he was buried in an unmarked grave in Detroit. In recent years, a fund that was developed by music industry friends and Jackie's fans helped purchase a fitting memorial marker for him at the West Lawn Cemetery in Detroit. He is buried next to his mother, Eliza Mae Wilson, who died in 1975 after she had traveled from Detroit to New Jersey to see him in the hospital. Jackie Wilson was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. He was voted into Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2005. In 2008, Jackie Wilson's Your Love Keeps Lifting Me, Higher and Higher was voted in as one of Michigan's legendary songs. In 2011, Lonely Teardrops was also voted a legendary Michigan song. Alright guys, that is the end of the video, please like this video and if you want to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. Also please leave a comment and share this video. Thanks.